As many of you know, overexertion injuries like soft tissue injuries to the back, shoulders, knees, hips, and hands are the number one most common workplace injury in the United States. Previously, we covered low back pain, which is the number one most common injured area. In today's video, we're gonna be specifically discussing the second most commonly injured area, shoulder injuries. According to the World Health Organization, shoulder injuries result in chronic pain for 9% of all adults in the United States. But since shoulders aren't my area of expertise, let's go back to our expert physical therapist and workplace injury prevention specialist, Chantel. Hey Chantel, nice to see you again. Well, hi Rachel, fancy seeing you here. I know, what are the chances? Let's get right into everybody's favorite subject matter, anatomy. But not the fun kind. The shoulder is called the ball and socket joint. The head of the humerus looks like a round ball and fits into a small socket of the scapula. As you can imagine, a small socket makes the shoulder very unstable. It's been compared to something like a golf ball on a tee. The T being the socket and the head of the arm bone or the humerus, the ball. The trade-off of having such a mobile shoulder is that it's very unstable and relies on muscles for everything. In order to ensure that we're in the best position possible to do our work, we also need to understand that the shoulder needs to be in the best position. Can you trust that just because you can lift your arm, you can get into the best position? We have some functional tests, one of which demonstrates the ability to get the shoulder to fully elevate the joint. Let's take a look at it. You'll find a blank wall. Flatten your spine against the wall by posteriorly tilting your pelvis. So you're gonna go ahead and stand up against the wall. Feet will be about a foot away from the wall. So about like that? Yep. And then you're gonna flatten that pelvis straight back. So I don't even know what that means. Don't get, don't get me into the weeds of like PT words that make no sense, nobody understands them, and then people okay. just nod, okay, right. Like I am right, right yeah, now. Exactly. Yeah, exactly, okay. yep. So posterior pelvic tilting, so our pelvis is right here, and if you have your hands around your pelvis, you can kind of think of it like a bowl of soup. Okay. Okay. What you want to do is you want to spill that soup out the back. Yep. <laughs> okay. All right, give me some more PPT. There you go. What that does okay. is it actually flattens the spine. Yeah, so you can I can see, feel it a little yeah, bit further exactly. against the wall now. Yep. Okay. Now what you're going to do is arms locked out nice and straight because people like to bend their elbows for a little bit more room. Okay. You're going to put your head against the wall too. And then you're going to bring those arms straight up, sweep them past the ears. Oh, oh keep those elbows nice and straight there. Oh, no. I got to admit, this is a little bit hard for me. Yeah. And so you can see elbows are rotated out just slightly. Should is that bad? Yeah. <laughs> it just means you should not be doing overhead work, is what that means. Yes. <laughs> so you're gonna work on keeping your elbows in a locked position, and okay. you can put your thumb right here, so that once your thumbs touch the wall. Okay, so that's a little bit easier. It feels kind of weird to have my head back like this as well. Okay. And then do you feel that right side rotating out? I don't, oh, but I can, now that you mention it. Weird. Yeah. But the left side seems okay, huh? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. Yep, so you did it. You did it. I did it, but I still don't have to do overhead work, right? <laughs> you should probably keep practicing this. Okay. Yeah, if you want to do overhead it's work. Yeah. If I'm honest, this is kind of uncomfortable. Uh -huh, yeah. While I can go on many tangents with this, if we simplify the message, it's simply to bring the work closer to the body and avoid internal rotation through the shoulder joint. In the workplace setting, we often give coaching on keeping the elbows closer to the body and the thumbs in an upright position. Conveniently, our body literally tells us whether it's in a good position or not. As we get into certain positions, the shoulder muscles are compromised or fatigued more easily. They're specifically at risk as we get into ranges above shoulder height or into a rotated position with the thumb pointed down. This is important with sustained positions, loaded positions, and repetitive movements. 
As we get higher into elevation positions, the joint has less room for the tendons. This is true even if we have that full mobility. It's even more true when we don't have that mobility. As the arm is held or used for longer periods of time, we have a progressive decrease in blood flow to the tissues and subsequent fatigue. This is also what happens with those rotated positions. It essentially closes down the joint and leaves very little wiggle room for the tendons and muscle to get the blood flow it needs, as well as the space it needs without compression. Likewise, there is a clear delineation between the risk decreasing as we bring our arms closer to our body with our work. So let's say I have some trouble getting up to the full height, but right here is really comfortable. If I can bring my work to more of an angle, will that help? Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Yep. Really, it's just if your elbows can stay below your shoulder height, you're doing mm -hmm. pretty good. Okay. As soon as your elbow goes above shoulder height, that's when we start to have some problems and some fatigue and some uh, compromise of the joint structure. The key is decreasing the cumulative trauma spent in these positions. Is there any way to re-engineer the work? Bring it closer to the body? Use a lift or ladder or square up to the work? Alternate the task? Provide breaks between work with shoulders elevated at the side? My PT ego just can't help itself without a quick plug for strength and flexibility. Keep in mind, you can never go wrong by getting strong. Injuries happen because the load exceeds the body's tolerance. Just like in professional athletes, the training and strength is key to prevention. When we cannot control the task or the movement, we can control our strength. Thank you, Chantel. Remember, these injuries are highly preventable with the right care. If this video was helpful, please hit that like button. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please hit that subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching, and until the next time, we'll see you guys later.